How many times have you traced out pattern pieces, carefully uh, cut them all out, laid out your fabric, cut out your pattern pieces, then you've pinned all of your fabric together and you find when you get to the end that your pattern pieces just don't match up and you've got this big difference. Why are your side seams different lengths all the time? I know this situ whole situation is so frustrating and Believe me, it happens to all of us, uh, particularly when we're learning to sew. Uh, and in my experience, it is a number of things that actually contribute to this. So I thought, let's talk about some of the reasons why this happens so you can get over this uh, frustrating hurdle and figure out why this is happening in your sewing routine. <laughs> Welcome back my lovely ladies and gents. Thank you for joining me again today. If we're just meeting, my name's Evelyn Wood. I'm a dressmaker and here on this channel we talk everything sewing, uh, vintage sewing skills, bringing all of those vintage sewing skills to our modern day sewing lives. So the question at hand is why do my seams not match up? Is it a cutting issue? Is it a uh, pinning issue? What is it? This question actually comes from Marcy. She is a member of uh, Vintage Sewing School. She asked this question inside the uh, membership forum. For those of you that don't know, Vintage Sewing School is my uh, new online sewing club, basically. And we do things like monthly challenges to keep ourselves accountable to our sewing goals. And we also do monthly Q&A. Now, this is the kind of thing that we do in the monthly Q&A, but this question was asked outside of it. And I thought, well, judging by the amount of uh, people following along on the thread inside the uh, the forum in the community, wanting to know the answer to, to this as well, to sort of find out why this happens. Uh, and then I thought maybe it'll be easier to make a video and then type it out. And then I thought if there's that much interest inside the group, probably you ladies and gents here might also be very curious as to why this happens. And so I thought I would just make a, a YouTube video here and answer this question right here for you. So let me paraphrase uh, Marcy's problem here. So she says, I trace my patterns and cut them out, making sure to measure the grain line. Uh, it never fails. My fabric never matches up. I'm working on a skirt that I thought would be easy, but I end up with half an inch difference at the front and back lengths on the, the hem length. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> I asked a few more questions and uh, Marcy is using just a muslin fabric uh, as a basically as a toile or a mock-up uh, so it's a nice non sort of stretchy fabric. Uh, she says sometimes this has happened on multiple projects as well so it's an ongoing problem not just with this one uh, pattern or one project that she's working on. It's ongoing and sometimes she's used rotary, rotary cutters and sometimes shears so it's a bit of both. Um, she switched to shears because she found she was uh, rotary cuttering off a small amount of the pattern. Uh, so she made the switch and trace. So she first of all traces out her pattern onto Swedish tratton pattern paper. And she says she's very uh, meticulous in measuring out the green line. And we can see here, this is the picture that uh, this is what's happening. So down um, where the arrow is here is the hemline. And we've got this kind of one, one and a half centimeter, half an inch uh, difference at the hemline of the skirt down here. And the pinned part is the side seam. Oh, I know this problem oh too well, because as I said, it happens, it really does to all of us. And there are many, many reasons. In my experience though, it's mostly there's a lot of processes that we go through to getting to the end um, pattern piece. There's the tracing. There's the, well, there's the, the first original pattern. Then there's the tracing. Then there's, the, there's the cutting of the fabric. Then there's the pinning. My experience, it's a little bit here and there over all of these processes that add up to uh, this big amount at the end. Let me explain a little. So let's uh, talk about the tracing. So first of all, you might have uh, when you're tracing out the patterns, be sure to make sure you iron out those patterns if you have any wrinkles, any creases, and it moves a little bit. This tissue is really flimsy and it can be quite difficult to kind of, you know, get perfectly flat. Now, something to consider is how thick is your pencil line? So if you draw a pencil line uh, down at the edge and it's a really thick uh, blunt pencil and then you uh, cut on the other side of that line, you've effectively added a few millimeters to your pattern size when you're tracing out. And imagine if you do that top and bottom of your pattern piece, 
Then you've added sort of four, five millimeters. That's maybe an eighth of an inch. Don't quote me on that. So just in the tracing process, you can add a little few millimeters here or there to the pattern piece. Doesn't make such a big difference. But then we move on to the cutting. And again, when you're uh, laying this out, it's really, really important to make sure that everything is sitting perfectly on grain, which you said you have uh, done. Now, uh, I can't, obviously, I'm not watching your entire process, so I can't see exactly what you're doing specifically, but these are the, the main things that, that go wrong in the process. So imagine when you're cutting and you cut on the outside of your traced pattern piece that is already slightly bigger uh, than your original pattern piece. And then you've added a few extra millimeters again because you're cutting on the other side of the lines. And remember, if on the other pattern piece, so you have two sides together, right? What if on this one is the rotary cutter where you accidentally shaved off a little bit of the pattern piece and this one had a little bit added on, then when you go to pin them together, you've got one bigger than the other, it very, very quickly, all these little millimeters here and there very quickly add up to being that, you know, half an inch uh, difference at the end of a hemline because this is quite a long uh, seam line down the side of a skirt like that. Now, Marcy said that she had this problem over several uh, different patterns, but I'm here to tell you that sometimes even commercial patterns are not 100% accurate. Now, different brands are all different and sometimes there are just faults in the pattern and the original pattern pieces maybe don't actually add up. And perhaps you wanna check your traced patterns to your, uh, the original pattern. How would you do that? It is super important and in pattern making, that's really crucial that you do this and you actually check your pattern every time you make a new draft or a new version or you cut it out. You actually need to check your pattern and check all of the seams actually match up because maybe it's not anything to do with what you've done, but maybe your original pattern pieces are slightly incorrect and they actually don't line up. So how can you actually measure this? Well, lucky for you, Marcy, uh, as a member of Vintage Sewing School, the measuring of patterns and the sizings and all of this is something that we will be doing extensive lessons in uh, in the coming months uh, in Vintage Sewing School. So we'll have many, many there. But a really quick and easy way uh, to check, you can do things like walking your pattern and uh, you can Google that uh, to, to find out how to do it. It's relatively easy. But the easiest way that I can show you uh, right now is to actually measure your pattern piece. So we're talking a side seam of a skirt here. So you want to get your tape measure. Now you need one of the soft, flexible uh, ones because we're going to measure down the side seam of each uh, side. So you've got back and front because these go together, right? So you want to measure them as if you were going to sew them uh, together. So yours may or may not be exactly the same shape. This is why I'm suggesting that you measure it because then it won't matter. So all you need to do is measure down the actual stitch line. So the finished stitch line. So that means you take out the uh, seam allowance from the top, you take out any hem allowance from down the bottom and you measure in your seam allowance at the side. So mark all of that in and then you use your tape measure. You, don't, you can't lay it flat because we're measuring a curve. So this is where you actually need to uh, lift up your tape measure and put it up on the side so you can flex it around and get a, a, a measurement uh, vertically with your tape measure. Now you put the start of the tape measure right at the actual stitch line. So right on that stitch point and measure down using your hands to walk your tape measure down the entire seam length until you get to the hem point. Again, just the inside the stitch line so where the finished garment will be. Write down that measurement and then measure the same, uh, the same seam that will be sewn together on the, the back front, measure that one and see if they're the same length or not. Or maybe you find you've got that half an inch difference between the front and the back. And that's when you know it's not your uh, process that made the difference. It is actually the original pattern that was out to begin with. And you would just make uh, pattern adjustments, um, which I cannot tell you how to do because it will depend on your pattern, the style, the shape, the everything. But that's where you can make any pattern adjustments if needed. So there's one other element that in this process of putting all of this together, and that is the pin. Now you did mention that you were a beginner and uh, I can definitely say that when you're starting I did the same. 
you start pinning at one end and you just pin along, 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 along until you get to the other end, right? That makes sense when you're starting, but you'll quite often find that you'll be pushing uh, the different lengths uh, at different amounts and you'll end up with that um, differing amount at the hemline when you get to the end. I've made uh, other videos on pinning fabric and how uh, I do it, my method, uh, and that is you need to be, when you know your pattern pieces are accurate, of course, you uh, pin both ends together and then using notches and easing in that amount through the sides to actually fit it in. Because if your pattern piece is correct, your two pieces should go together. So I'll link those pinning videos uh, down below in the description box. So definitely go and watch those as well. Because when you pin this right and ease it in, you won't end up with that uh, horrible difference down the bottom. Now, I don't know Marcy's exact pattern, but I can just going to take an assumption that it is kind of like my little uh, third scale skirt pattern piece here that I just, I just hand her out this, this is not to scale. Uh, but it looks like it is kind of this edge here, the side seam and here it's kind of square. So I imagine it's something like a pencil, a small A-line type skirt. Now looking really, really closely at this picture, uh, look at the top layer of uh, fabric. You can really you see the grain line is running quite square. You can see where all of the uh, separate yarns are coming off and you can see that they go relatively straight along that, uh, that corner. It's kind of like a right angle, which makes me think it's more like a this type style skirt. The one underneath, the layer of fabric underneath, it's different. The grain line is actually skewed differently on that piece. So you can see really closely uh, the direction of the yarns there are different. They're on a slightly different uh, angle than the one on top, which obviously means that they're cut slightly on different grains. Now, I don't know if your pattern pieces uh, require this and that is the way it's made, but if it's a pencil skirt like this, and most often, most modern patterns that we go to, uh, two sides that join together are generally on the same grain line. It would be quite uncommon that they're actually, one is on a sort of slightly off grain bias and the other one is on a straight grain. That's not really common. So I actually think that one of these pieces has been uh, cut slightly off grain, whether it's um, not measured, whether the fabric has warped when you've cut it, maybe it, the fabric is a little bit warped and it sh maybe uh, pre-washing can help that. Many different things, I don't know what you did to start with, but to me, looking at that picture indicates that one is different uh, grain line than the other. What does that mean? That means that your pinning process will be even harder because your top layer, if this one is on grain, that's going to stay pretty solid and straight. But if this one underneath is off grain, it's going to stretch and warp. So if you don't kind of use the pinning method that I suggest uh, in the video below, in easing in between, if you just push it across, that one off grain is going to pull out even more because it's going to stretch down. And that's what's going to cause a big difference when you get to the end. Now, here's the thing. I'm not able to watch any of your processes from start to finish. And it's up to you to be able to backtrack and uh, go back and find out. Now, the quarter inch at a hemline like this on a skirt, it's not, it, it is a big amount and it's not at the same time. It, in pattern making, that's a lot to have your patterns be out. When you're sewing just a one-off garment for yourself on that particular area at the hemline on such a long seam like that, it's not that much. You can fudge your way through in making your garment and it won't uh, affect the overall design. You'll be able to kind of, as I say, fudge your way through and, and make it still, still work and look fine at the end. But the thing is, I will always encourage you to backtrack and find out why did that happen? It's always, you always want to go and find out why it didn't, why that occurred. Was it your cutting? Was it your pinning? Was it the grain line of the fabric? Was it your tracing of your patterns? When you figure out and you're able to backtrack, you're able to improve your skills and get better and better and really hone in and perfect and really, you know, increase your level in the craft of sewing uh, because we that's what we aim to do right is to improve our skills so all these little things no longer occur as we up level our sewing skills every single time and now in my experience uh, it's generally a little bit of everything that makes that adds up to be the difference like that it's a little bit when you're tracing your pattern a few millimeters here or there 
uh, another when you're cutting out your fabric it's a few millimeters here or there remember one side uh, you're adding and the other one you're taking off it all of a sudden gets even more millimeters that add up to the end and then if you pin it and you're not sort of easing it in as you go it's very very quickly adds up to uh, you know that quarter inch that 1.5 centimeters can add up really really easily and it's quite easy to do but the good news is it's quite easy to fix if you backtrack your steps and figure out what in your process uh, happened along the way and what you can improve for next time to get a better result. If you are ready to up level your sewing and you really want to take it to the next level and have a wonderful community around you as well to keep you motivated and have monthly uh, Q&A opportunities just like this one, I invite you to join me uh, and all of us at VintageSewingSchool.com where you can become a member and we do this kind of Q&A sessions every single month and it is just invaluable. Let me know below your biggest takeaways from this video, uh, what you found the most interesting what you're going to look at in your own sewing let me know that down below in the comments and let me know if you like this kind of q a style of video if so i will do it again remember to subscribe if you haven't already because we do this kind of sewing videos all of the time and i have so many more amazing ones planned for 2020 and i hope that you'll be here to watch them all like this video if you liked it and until next time happy sewing bye